Hey guys, Kellen back here with Inside Out Precision and today I want to talk to you guys about releases, specifically index style releases. So these are going to be the most common for bow hunters by far. If you're just starting out in archery, it's probably what you're going to learn on. And there's a lot of different brands out there with different models of releases. So I'm going to go over some of the brands we sell here at the shop and the difference between uh, dual caliper, single caliper, hook style, and some of the features that I really look for in a release uh, to ensure a forgiving and, and clean shot execution. So starting um, kind of at the bottom end of the price point anyway, um, this is the True Fire Smoke. Uh, we sell this for $59.99. It's a great beginning release. Uh, it is a dual caliper, and when I say dual caliper, I mean when I squeeze the trigger and let go, both of those jaws open and close around my string loop. And while there's not a big difference in accuracy between a dual caliper or single or hook style, which I'll show you here in a second, um, I have noticed, you know, especially working here, guys that shoot the dual caliper, they tend to chew through string loops a lot faster. These, the little, the little uh, seam on top and bottom there where the, where the jaws come together, just over time, it's, you know, it always hits the exact same point and it tends to chew through the loop a little bit faster, but string loops are pretty cheap. You know, you can, you can replace them every four or five months and it's only going to be, you know, five, six bucks out of your pocket. So not a huge deal, um, but something to consider. Uh, another cool feature of this release is that it is adjustable in length. So by loosening this little set screw on, on the shank here, I can make this longer or shorter. And the importance of that is that everybody has different size hands. And based on, on you know, the size of my hand, I may, if, if that release is too long right out of the box and I can't make it any shorter, when I get to full draw, if I have to reach for that, that release where my finger is kind of on top of it and I'm, I'm pulling it like this, it's going to put downward pressure on that trigger, which in turn puts downward pressure on your loop, which can cause tuning arrows and, and flight issues. So I like a release that I can get short enough to where, and I'll show you my personal release here in a second, but when I get back to full draw and my hand is in a relaxed position, my finger comes down around the trigger, and then, then I'm pulling straight back on the trigger while I execute. So there's, there's no pressure going any direction other than straight away from the arrow which is gonna give you the most forgiveness and consistency. So it's really common, I see guys, they adjust the release to where in their hand at rest, it, it feels about right, but then once they get back to full draw and there's some pressure, you know, that, that wrist strap pulls up over their hand a little bit more and then they're reaching for that release. And usually they end up hanging on to it and just trying to squeeze with one finger. And I'll get into in a second to why that's important. Um, if you haven't seen our video on Anchor Point, I would suggest go checking that out because the length of the release is going to have a lot to do with this, the position of this hand at full draw. Um, so if you haven't seen that, go check that out. Um, it's really important to ensure you're not getting any torque in the back half here. It also features, you know, it's all, everything here is on swivels. So again, if I'm not hanging on to the shank of that release, these swivels are going to pull in a straight line. They're kind of going to act like a plumb bob of sorts. So again, that's going to make sure that, that that release is coming straight back and I'm not getting any sideways pressure on that loop or twisting that loop one way or the other, which will move the knock this way a little bit. So cool release. Um, another one from True Fire. This is a little higher in their lineup. This is the True Fire uh, Hardcore. So really comfortable strap on this release. It's a buckle style strap. Um, you can see it's just the, the hook style. And aside from string loop wear, one thing that I really like about having the hook is that um, in a hunting situation, I don't have to look down at my string to get this release hooked up at all. I can just feel the loop with my thumb, bring the release right in, hook it up, and not have any movement, which may seem kind of trivial, but if you got an animal that's coming in and they're kind of, you know, they're looking for you, like let's say you're elk hunting and you've been calling, they're going to be looking for any sort of movement. And if I look down and then have to look back up, they might spot me. So the less movement I have, the better, in my opinion. Um, hook style, they're getting more and more popular. Uh, you know, it's a really clean release, easy to use. This particular release is cool in the sense that um, after the release fires, all I have to do is hit that trigger one more time and it resets, it locks itself again. And then just like the smoke I showed you, 
I can loosen this, this set screw here and unscrew this and it will lengthen the shank of the release or I can, and then tighten it back up and it will still swivel this way even though the, the, the set screw is tight. So I can make it really short, I can make it really long. This particular one is shortened all the way up and I'll show you what that looks like, why I like it short. So you can see in my hand at rest, the, the hook stops right where my, my fingers come into my palm. And for me, that seems to be about the correct length for just about any release I shoot. And the reason for that is that when I get into full draw, fingers are behind the trigger, I come into my anchor point. When I bring those fingers around, see how my hand it can just come into a naturally relaxed position? So around the trigger there, I'm not, if it was really long, I'd be reaching for it like this. I'll show you that in a second. But when it's short like this, I can come in and my finger hooks that trigger. And as I squeeze, it's just a, a clean release. Everything's moving straight back. And again, if you haven't seen the anchor point video, I talk about the importance of a relaxed hand like that. Um, it's hard to do if you have a release that's too long. So, you know, maybe I just don't tighten it up all the way or I have that release too long. What it'll, what it'll look like when I get to full draw is I relax that finger. See, now I have to reach, I have to reach for that, that trigger and I'm not pulling straight back on it. I'm actually putting downward pressure when my finger's on top of the trigger like that. So that's gonna cause, you know, downward pressure on the trigger will cause downward pressure on the loop, which can have the ability to affect your arrow flight and the tuning of your arrow. So again, I like to wear these pretty snug. I don't. You know, when I relax my finger, I don't want that strap pulling way up over my hand. I want it to stay put pretty well. So, um, really cool release from True Fire. I think we sell these for $99.99. Every release I'm reviewing today is available on our website at thebowrack.com. Or if you come by the shop, we have all of these as demos that you can shoot and, uh, and check out for yourself. So, really cool release there. Um, the next one I'm looking at is the Spot Hog. Where did I put it? There it is. <laughs> uh, this is the Spot Hog Wise Guy. Um, they've had this release out for a few years. Recently, they came out with the BOA system on the strap here. So you might have seen this on like snowboard boots or bindings, and uh, it eliminates the the buckle with the hole basically. So this I just click down, twist it up, and it will tighten. Pull that up and it loosens. So really cool system. Some guys have said, you know, you want, you want to make sure that you, you tighten it about the same each time because if I get it really tight, it, that release is going to feel shorter. If I don't tighten it as much that, you know, it's going to pull up over my hand and that release will feel a little bit longer. I have one of these on my personal release and I've not ever had an issue with it. Um, it's never failed me. It's always worked and it's, it's pretty easy to tell, you know, how much, how tight it needs to be. Um, so really cool system by them. Uh, the, the strap is, is made, I believe by true glow. Um, they have the, and you can buy it with, you can buy this release in a number of different configurations. You can get it with the solid shank like this with a buckle strap. You can get the, a, the solid shank with the bow strap. You can also get a nylon strap between the head and the, the strap here in both the buckle and the boa as well. And the one thing I will say about the, the solid shank like this is there are no swivels. So it's a lot more important as a shooter that you make sure you're not turning this hand, this your anchor point hand differently shot to shot because that will put a little bit of different uh, tension on that loop. So you want to make sure that hand is flat, comes in, hooks the trigger, should be good. I shot one of these for a lot of years. It's a great release. Um, what I really like about this one is the trigger itself. So there is zero movement in this trigger before it fires, which I really, really like. Um, if I can feel movement in the trigger, it's gonna make me anticipate that shot that's about to break. And generally in archery, you wanna get rid of any anticipation of that shot. Um, you, want the, you want the shot to be either at, the, at first, it'll be a surprise, and we'll, I'll be making some videos on shot execution in a, in a couple weeks here. Um, eventually, it won't be a surprise. You know the shot's about to break, but you don't force it the rest of the way. You just keep aiming, 
and, and building pressure on that trigger until it breaks. And this trigger has zero movement. So I, I cannot feel this trigger about to move before the shot actually breaks. Whereas on the two true fires I showed you, um, even more so on the smoke, you can see here, you know, that trigger moves quite a bit before those jaws actually open. So when I'm aiming and I'm squeezing, I feel that trigger moves. I go, oh, oh, shot's about to break, shot's about to break. And if you're not real disciplined, you might either kind of force the follow through or you might drop that bow arm before the shot's actually off the bow just because you can anticipate that shot coming. Uh, the hardcore doesn't have nearly as much travel as that. It's very minimal, but there is still a little bit there. So great mechanism, Spot Hog's an awesome company. They're a local company for us here. They're just right up the road in Harrisburg. Um, on the very, very, very rare occasion that I've seen one of these fail, it's usually not the release's fault. It's usually the user. Um, they have an adjustability, or an adjustable tensioning in their triggers, that little tiny set screw right there. If I turn that set screw clockwise, it's gonna make this trigger hotter. If I back it out, it's gonna make it stiffer. And if you get it too hot, Basically, there's not enough mechanism inside there hooking the little sear, and it will, at, right when you get to peak poundage in your bow, if there's not enough holding it, it'll just break loose, and then you punch yourself in the face, and it's not a good thing. So you don't want to get that, that trigger too hot. Um, I actually prefer a stiffer trigger. I want to be able to come back and get my finger around it and on there solid without it, without worrying about it firing. Um, you know, a really hair trigger, you'll see guys that come in and they just kind of feather that trigger. They come in and they touch it and their, their finger kind of goes like this because they're afraid if they if they touch it too soon, it's gonna fire before their pin is in the middle. And again, we'll get into more shot execution stuff where that will come into play a little bit more in later videos. Um, but I really like having the adjustability in a trigger like this to make it stiff or light depending on my style of shooting. Everybody's different. There's guys out there who do command the shot and have great success with it. So I'm not here to say it's right or wrong, just giving my personal opinion. So really cool release from Spot Hog. It is adjustable in the lengthwise in the shank here. And then you can see on these last couple of releases, um, the distance between the trigger and the jaw or the hook is very short. And to me, that's a characteristic that I really like to look for because if you have a, especially an older style release where they used to hook on the string, the triggers are offset from the jaws, maybe an inch, inch and a half. And what happens with that is that even if my draw length is set correctly and that string comes back and the release is you know, hooked on the string loop right here, if the trigger is an inch back here and then my hand is behind the trigger, now my hand is floating even though, even though the, the draw length and the, the string loop are in the correct position on my face. So having a trigger that's forward close to the, uh, the hook like that will ensure a really solid connection here on your anchor point and that you're not, you don't have to shorten your draw length just to get your hand in the, in the correct position on your face. So most triggers now are gonna be within, you know, a half inch to a quarter inch, maybe even less uh, to the jaw. So you're not sacrificing any, any draw length. Um, kind of a good example of that is this is another really popular release. This is made by Trueball, a very popular company. They make a lot of really good releases. Um, this is called the Short and Sweet, and I have the ability to get this thing. I can shorten this even more, even though it's already really short, just with this clamp here. This clamp will loosen, and I can shorten up this rope. Now this has what they call a forward trigger. So you can see that trigger is quite literally just even with the hook. And so for, for people that have you know small hands, you can get this really really short and get that you know get your finger around that trigger well. Um, but one thing I will say with a forward trigger like that is that you may notice when you get into your anchor point because it is so close to the loop, you might get some face pressure on your string. So even though the draw length feels good with my hand being that close to the string loop, that string is going to be really really tight to my face. So you may need to play with the length of your string loop, not so much the release to get this hand in a position where you're not gonna get a bunch of face pressure on your string and you don't, don't feel scrunched up. So this one also has a very crisp trigger. There's no movement in it. Again, I just hit the trigger and it resets the, uh, resets the hook. And then I have the tension adjustability and that little set screw right there. Um, again, counterclockwise makes it hotter, uh, or counterclockwise makes it stiffer, clockwise makes it hotter. 
So been a really popular one. They make this same release uh, with a swept back trigger, which is actually the one that I prefer um, because I like to get my hand in that relaxed position. So I'll show you, show you with my personal release. And actually before I do that, I'll go over what the release is. So this is a Scott. Uh, this is the Wildcat. They actually don't make, Scott got bought out a few years ago by the Outdoor Group and they changed the names on a lot of their releases. So they don't make this exact model. Um, now it's a, the Scott family started a new release company called B3. Um, they have one called the King, which is basically the same thing here. And it's a very simple mechanism in the, in the actual release head here. So there's no springs that are going to wear out on me. Um, over time, it's, you know, as long as I don't get a bunch of sap and dirt and gunk in there, it's always going to be a reliable trigger. This one is the single caliper. So you can see it just has the one jaw that opens and closes. So I've been shooting it for a long time. I've got a little bit more wear on my string loop than I would with just a hook, but I'm just really comfortable with this release. It was one of the first releases. I've, I've always had a Scott since I started. I shot the wise guy for a long time, then actually ended up losing it. <laughs> and this was my backup and I just haven't really felt the need to go to another release. Um, it's got the you know pretty forward trigger, it's just a straight bar. Um, but what I like about this, is you can see where that release hits me in my hand. Again, it's right where my, my fingers come into my, my palm there. And when I get to full draw with this, this on here, there we go. So I can bring that hand into my face and when I bring the, my hand around, it's just perfectly relaxed in a relaxed position, but my finger is on the trigger. So as I'm aiming and I just start to, I tension in with the back, start to squeeze, boom, and it fires. And to me, being able to get my hand in that relaxed position enables me to squeeze through the shot. And I think the reason for that is one of your most basic motor skills as a kid is squeezing like this, right? So you give your finger to a baby, what does it do? It squeezes all its fingers around your around your uh, your finger. So this is, is single brain function, just squeezing my hand. If I have to hang on to the release and then squeeze that finger, that's dual brain function. So imagine when you're driving your car, you never have to think about putting your hand on the steering wheel and just grabbing the steering wheel. But if you had to keep all these fingers in a bunch and try and just hook the steering wheel with one finger, you'd be thinking about it a lot more. It would require a lot more attention basically to achieve the same, same end goal. So, you know, when my hands just in a completely relaxed position, you see all my fingers hang like that. I basically just want a trigger to be inserted in front of that finger when my hand is in that position. So that's why I like any release that has adjustability in its length here. Um, this one does have an adjustable trigger. It's a little different than like the, the spot hog and the, uh, that sweet spot I just showed you. There is a little bit of movement here. And essentially when I adjust, so the, the set screw for it is kind of down inside here. And if I, if I back that set screw out, when I close the jaw, that trigger just doesn't come as far forward. So it'll start more here, meaning it has to travel a, a smaller distance to fire. Whereas if I screw that screw all the way in, that trigger comes further forward and it requires a little more travel to fire. Now there is a little bit of movement in this trigger. It's not a completely static trigger like the spot hog or, um, or that sweet spot, but it's, I'm just comfortable with it. I've shot it for a ton of years. It's always been reliable and uh, you know, it's just a great release. So like I said, Scott is the, the manufacturer of this one, B3 is the original Scott family that started Scott. Um, I don't have any in stock or I'd be showing you some of those right now, but the, the King is basically just the revamp model of the Wildcat, this Wildcat. So a bunch of cool releases there. Um, another cool one, this one's also made by Trueball. This is a single caliper release, kind of like my Wildcat I was just showing you. But this trigger is very, very crisp. And again, it's got, you know, it's on full swivels here, so you're not gonna get any torque. They also offer this in two different size wristbands. And I really like that because for whatever reason, it seems like all these wrist straps, it's like they have the biggest guy in the world that they sized them on because I rarely see anybody who's, you know, any more than like two or three holes from being all the way tightened up. And a lot of women and youth that I coach 
we can't get that release tight enough. We have to actually drill another hole in the strap and then there's a bunch of balled up material there and it's just not as comfortable. So with this Valor, you can get the smaller size strap and this, I've yet to meet somebody that I can't get this tight enough on. Um, so again, that's gonna make sure it doesn't pull up over my, my wrist and I'm, I'm not reaching for that trigger. It's got an adjustable trigger um, in terms of the, you know, the, the tension on it. They're rated up to 100 pounds, which nobody's gonna be pulling 100 pounds, but you know, really solid mechanism in there. Um, just a really crisp, nice release. There is a little bit of noise when you hook it on and off. Um, I don't know of anybody who's had a deer jump a string because the release made noise, but some guys, you know, they want everything as quiet as it can be. So something to consider. But lots of cool releases out there on the market. I will be doing a video on some handheld releases, both hinges and thumb buttons here in the future. We're just waiting for a bunch of the stock that we ordered from the shows to come in. Um, so when I get a few of those, I'll go over that. Um, again, if you are if you haven't seen our videos on the anchor point and this position of your backhand here, go check those out. That's going to really come into play when you're choosing your release. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and feel free to comment uh, any questions. I love, I love feedback. I love answering your guys' questions. So until next time, remember precision is your decision and keep them inside out.